Hello and welcome to another episode of Historic Hindsight. I'm John, that's Tom, and today we're redecorating. That's right, Johnny. We're going to redecorate by going to Turkey and using some of their fancy Turkish Ottomans. Ah, or at least discussing a battle that happened in Turkey oh. way back in the day. So Okay, so yeah. those are similar, I guess. Uh, was there any sort of... Um... Uh, redecorating uh, after the result of this, were they? Did they? Well, there was definitely some redecorating. In, yeah, there was definitely some redecoration in some empire borderlines and some redecoration in military tactics, so to speak. So in okay, all of historical battles or sieges, there is a battle, there is a myth, uh, and then there is the the actual truth that comes out of that. Of course, and yeah. one of the greatest battles that has one of the greatest myths that follow along with it is the siege of Plevna, where. Um, uh, these things, these repeating rifles, uh, specifically oh. the 1873, this is a 1860 Henry, but the 1873 uh, with a magazine, uh, uh, you know, in reserve that you could, you know, rapid fire. Uh, that is where this becomes really popular as far as a military context and really changes the course of the battlefield. Although the reality of the battle was that that had like limited to no impact. Okay, but... but so we'll we it. are obviously late 1800s, early 1900s, maybe. Mm -hmm. But this isn't this isn't way back in the the kind of um, empire days. Uh, early on, this is more. This is towards towards the end of the Ottoman Empire. I have yes, to imagine. Yes, yeah, it's it's towards the it, well. It should have been the end, but they uh, they really kind of hold off on a on a last minute. <laughs> Spree All right, let's here. get into it. Where are, oh, we'll when into are it. we? Where are we? Yep. What's going on? So this is a this is a part of the Russo-Turkish War, which happened in 1877 to 1878. So it was a not a very long <laughs> war for the year. one year. Yeah, one or year. So. Yeah, okay. and most of it is the siege. But uh, it's a combined army of Russian and Romanian forces. They're going to be at war with the Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. And during their invasion of what is now Bulgaria, Russia's goal was to cross the Balkan Mountains and enter Constantinople by avoiding all the fortified Turkish cities that were around the Black Sea. So go up over the mountains and over mainland as opposed yep. to by the sea where all the major forces were. If we can kind of cut in through the back door, so to speak, yeah, we'll get into, get into Constantinople and end that whole Ottoman Empire thing. Is this before or after Constantinople uh, was Istanbul? No, this is Constantinople. Then goes is, Istanbul. This is yeah. Yeah. Istanbul, Istanbul was, was Constantinople. Constantinople. Okay. But now it's just Istanbul, mm -hmm. but it yeah. was Constantinople. But, yeah, right. that's, that's okay, all right, yeah. so we're all clear there. We're all clear there, yep, 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 yep. Uh, the problem here is that the Ottoman army that was led by Osman Pasha, he was returning from Siberia with his war there in Siberia and actually kind of put a military force where the Russians weren't expecting there to be one. So, All right, so, uh, so he's coming off of doing something... Good for the Ottoman Empire. Yes. Right? Doing well. well. And then he's yeah. he's heading back. Yes. Yep, and yes, yes, yes. gets diverted. What, he has to go fight this war yes. now? Yes. So like his, just... <laughs> uh, he was given orders to go and, and, and intercede against the, the Russian uh, forces that were coming across into uh, what is now Bulgaria. Uh, okay. But his problem is that he isn't quite there in time and kind of gets delayed. But he sets up camp at the city of Plevna uh, where he is going to meet the Russians. But in July of So he's trying to get there. But I, I'm guessing just terrain, weather, just it's not an easy ask like they, they <laughs> he just, he just came it, off it would have taken a war time in for them just yeah. to get word to go out and change yeah. his route this is still and then, pre you know, and so he sets here. up in plevla plevla plevna Ple yeah, yeah plevna. Plevna. yep so okay. in july of 1877 russian grand duke nicholas is going to move his army across the danaub river uh with relative ease there's not a lot of you know ottoman forces here uh, Pasha is going to be sent to cut off Nicholas at Nikopol, uh, but on July 16th, Nicholas was able to take the city with ease as Pasha has not yet made it there in time, which is why Pasha <laughs> okay. then takes, you know, the city of Plevna as his defensive ground. And this is where right, he So does. he basically sees that that city that he was supposed to go defend got yep. just taken. taken. No yep. problem. And he's not going to go attack to defend it or whatever. So he's just, all right, well, next stop is Plevna, likely, yep. to wherever their goal is. And so set up base have time to put yes, up defenses, build defenses. And, and this whatever. is where it gets key so what what uh, pasha does do is he sets up a series of readouts which are basically like makeshift forts that are all around the city from all angles so no matter which like, way the russians come like there are like ta like little scout tower things or like little camps of uh like, like little or... uh, fortified positions like there are okay. a series of trenches there are fortified defensive positions for his infantry there are fortified gun positions okay for and i imagine a lot of this is on kind of the paths into plevna Yes, uh, yeah, kind of out to 
serve as hiccups yeah. or speed bumps or warnings, if nothing else. Yeah, and, it, it, and it also guards defend. the whole city from complete, like, you know, you can siege the city, but you still got all these forts that are going to protect it. Okay. Uh, what he also does is he puts up distance markers around these readouts so that he knows what? exactly where, you know, if the Russian army is coming in, how far out they are from these forts so that he can have his army set the sights on their guns ah. and do volley fire with precise aiming, which is going to be really important if you're a defending army. Yeah, so I, so basically it... it it's like going to a, a driving range or something where you have 50 yards, 100 yes. yards, 200 yards marked out, whatever. And you can see how far you're, you're hitting it. But in this case, they know right where to set the sights to say, all yeah. right, they're at 200 yards, whatever. Now we'll set our sights and then bang. And then we're just going to hit whatever line of people are marching directly yeah, towards very, us. <laughs> very important to note. Uh, for the viewers at home, that this is still in the age very much of uh, single shot, whether it be muzzle loaders or breech loaders. Uh, you know, repeaters do exist, but they're not the most common thing on the battlefield. Right. So this is still yeah, very so much the age of single shot line formations that are going to be walking at four to five positions as opposed to, you know, spread out and trying to flank and all that kind of stuff. Right. And so in the, in the four to five positions, then also uh, with the same type of equipment, they have line line behind them and then yes. just fire volley and then swap spots or whatever do you fire reloading volley. fire volley and uh yes. okay yep very much that's that's what we've got going on here um in the middle of july russian general yuri shunder uh he's going to receive orders to occupy plevna with the fifth division of the ninth corps uh yuri's going to arrive on the 19th and begin bombarding bombarding the city's defenses with his artillery and on the 20th it's the first battle of plevna johnny where yuri is able to capture several readouts around the cities oh, did. Uh, around their outer defenses but pasha brings up his reinforcements driving the russians out of the captured trenches uh and as you know for the battle, that's that's pretty much it. Just that's one it. So, day. So they're like, "Hey, we take got the it!" Forts, and, and then, then they lose like, the forts. No, you don't. No, you and don't. Nothing happened. Some people probably died. I would imagine. Yep. Uh, nothing really special here in regards to tactics or expectations. I mean, right, really, just it wasn't marching. Uh, the Russians obviously expected Yuri to just march in because they weren't really expecting Pasha to have that good of defensive positions there because nothing that they've seen up to this point was defended. So they were now, they just thought, "Go take did it." The Rus- did the Russians have reason to think that they would just march right in? Like, yeah, because they've it, had is no, this a point in time no in history? Resistance. Okay, so they just thought there was no resistance. Yeah. It's not a point in time in history where Russia is so powerful they're just kicking everyone's ass and doing whatever no. they want. Like, that doesn't seem to have ever existed or else they'd run the world right now. <laughs> well, um, they're doing such a great job in Ukraine, Johnny. <laughs> they're they're crushing it. Yeah, crushing you know, it. This, I mean, this is a, re- a repeat, right? Like, they're yeah. like, oh, we'll march right in and take it. And, uh, yeah, well. It pretty much the, they well, go exactly the way they wanted to. Uh, Russians, you know, Russians on this day are going to lose around 3,000 men. To Pasha losing only about 2,000, which is a fairly common okay. casualties for this time, people, especially though. with a defending versus attacking army. It's fairly yeah, common. but that, I mean, I, I, I suppose several thousand is what happens when you just march in a straight line towards a bunch of people who I mean, these are civil war level be. yeah these are civil war level casualties here uh pasha is going to continue to bring up reinforcements and has around twenty-two thousand men with 58 pieces of artillery uh, around the oh, city yeah. of plevna uh, and lot. he's continuing to build those defenses as he is expecting a full siege to take place but Russia is going to call upon the Prince Carol of Romania, and uh, General Nikolai Grinder is going to get into uh, uh, into this area with Russian forces now swelling to thirty five thousand men and one hundred and seventy six guns. So that's quite the advantage there. Now I, uh, Romania is an ally, I assume yes, they're calling yeah. in to come and, and be yes, like, "Hey, this wasn't as easy as maybe we thought it was going to be." So if you wanted to come help us, that'd be great. Yes, please. Thank you. Whatever else. And that they very much do. And Johnny, on the 31st of July, Kringner was also ordered to take the city. And all expectations are that he would take it with ease because well, you've got we have like three Romanians times the artillery too. pieces yeah, and, uh-huh. you know, a significantly healthy advantage in men. And we have not yet in history discovered that it is harder to attack than it is to defend. And so they just figured, oh, same number of people will be fine. Or well, two, three times as many and we'll be fine. But it turns out that... Just sitting there and going bang, and then reloading and then going bang, and that's easy. With his cavalry attacking the eastern redoubts, uh, and General Mikhail Skobolev attacking the northern redoubts. Okay. 
And you see, there's a lot of foreign observers during this battle because it's it's a relatively, you know, two decent sized countries going at it, relatively well, new arms technology that's being developed at the time. We want to see how this is all going to start to play what out. What do you mean? What do you mean foreign observers? Like, uh, these are the like spectators? You know, in, people? Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, think of military generals, or not necessarily generals, but military officers from other armies, uh, you know, from other countries that want to see how these two modern armies are going to fight to each other, see, hey, what tactics work, what tactics don't. <laughs> well, they're common. not using modern tactics. They're using Civil War ta- era yeah. tactics. Like, well, is, yeah, well, these people, well, I guess that's modern sort of weapons modern, do, like, I guess, so to speak. And this all is right, a, so they have a, have a bunch of basically military people from across the world collecting intel on yes. what's going on in this. So, and okay. what they're, uh, right. they're going to see, Johnny, here is that the Russians are going to get cut to shit. By Pasha's defensive force. <laughs> By a couple of yard markers and a whole bunch of uh, muzzle loaders, right? No, what they're or, gonna... they, or were they using that? that was it the repeater bit? That, yeah, so, that... so uh, it is important to note that the Plevlin forces, uh, Pasha's forces, do have a bunch of 1873 Winchesters, which again are very similar to this. Those, you know, and that's rounds. just, that's a, yeah, that's just bang, a lever action. You yeah, do bang, the bang, flick bang, thing, bang. like yep. your Red Rider. And you fire another one, right? Uh, but the majority of the uh, majority of the uh, the uh, uh, Ottoman forces are still using single shot breech loading guns. So that's very important. What's but, breech load? Uh, which means you just you, you you open up the back end of the gun and you put a okay. modern metallic cartridge in, so you don't have to like load it from the front. All right, so it's still it's cartridge. It's not, it's not the yeah. it's not uh, like this. a cap and ball. Or it's not no. a muzzle loader. Or whatever. It's cartridge. It's cartridge but it's gun, but only one, one at shot time. at a time. Yeah. Bang. Yep, okay. yep, 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 yep. Quicker uh, than muzzle loader, though. Still, no doubt, right? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's like it's around ten shots a minute versus like the three with a muzzle loader, okay. but which significantly less than like the thirty with a magazine gun. <laughs> uh, but uh, what is, and so, and that's what they see. They see they see just infantry just getting slaughtered, and they attribute it like, well, they know that there's repeaters. And so it's got to so be. It's, it's got to be this. Bang, that's got to be what it is. Uh, the, the problem with that is is um. The areas where there were fast-moving troops, you know, like guys on horseback, the ponies, yeah, yeah. those are the redoubts that uh, that that fell. Okay, what? But what, so it'd be just because they were able to, they, were they able couldn't to move reload fast quick enough and close with, and their, fast, so the, with the that, single cartridge bits? Yeah, or? Mm-hmm. that precise volley didn't work. And the repeaters were supposed to be able to stop those gaps uh, right. uh, from being formed by those fast-moving troops, and, 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 they, and they really... Uh, they really didn't do their job. In fact, it was majority of the casualties were, con- you know, were done by the German Krupp rifles that the Ottomans had, and the English Peabody Martini Henry rifles that the Russians, I mean, that the Ottomans also had, which again are all just single shot, uh, breech loading guns. All right. So I know. So you mentioned like thirty rounds a minute or whatever with the the repeater, but then okay, so you go through those thirty rounds and then what? And then how? And then do you, you have, to, have It takes forever in a day to. Re- so like you've got fifteen rounds in the magazine, and yeah, you can go through those real quick, but then. You have to reload. You got to reload those one at a time. A bunch of magazines ready to go, which they probably didn't. Well, that, it, it doesn't. It doesn't with the uh, with the seventy. It's not like it's not like modern one bullet guns. In a, yeah, you can only put one bullet in at a time with these guns. So yeah, you've got a fifteen oh. round magazine, but you can't like there's no there's no it's detached not, magazine. Put a new. It's magazine not in. releasing one. No, it's, a new one it's, on. it's it's one bullet at a time. So yes, you've got a real good advantage for those those. You know, fifteen for shots. However that long gun. it takes you to fire off fifteen. But shots after that, that long. And then you have to sit there. Oh, oh, they're getting closer. Oh yep. shit! Okay. Oh god. Yeah. So, uh, so okay. So in one minute, it can do a whole lot more. What about after over the course of like five to ten minutes? So it, it's got to the... even out a little bit, right? Like, so the military, the United States Army, for instance, it never adopted a a magazine gun that could only be single single fed because it's not quick like enough. Smokeless, make, it's smokeless nonsense. Air. nonsense. Because what they've learned is that over the course of uh, a battle, the yeah. the magazine gun that's your single feeding has right. got no advantage over a single shot gun. The problem yeah. is perception here at this battle, because the casualties were so high at mm-hmm. this battle on the second yeah. battle of Plevna, that all the European armies started going batshit about well, magazine guns. You also have to take into consideration this is uh, a time... Ty- like- the for the past at this point for the past what 30 40 years the technology and firearms has really started to kind of whoop on yeah the the civ- from the civil war on like the the mid 1800s to the late 1800s even you know yeah. th- that 50 year block we go from uh, uh muzzle loading single shot you know mm-hmm. percussion guns like this to 
fully automatic smokeless powder maximum machine guns in like a 50 year spread yeah that's insane but and so any new bit of uh kind of gun technology it's just like uh you know it, it just to you know today when cell phone stuff comes out or whatever everyone freaks out about it and a lot of the times it turns out that the whatever came up with was shit but uh you're excited about it because it's new, it's shiny, and yeah. probably you're seeing a whole lot of marketing and 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 people saying, "Oh, this is the this is going to change the course of war forever," and uh, so yeah. people are going to believe that and buy into it and and want to believe it, right? Yeah, they they definitely want to. But in any case, Johnny, uh, after the the Russian cavalry underneath. Shadkovsky is able to capture several readouts. Posh is able to once again regroup and push back the assault, taking back those readouts that were lost. Uh, after the second battle, so, the Russians same thing suffer. again, right? Yeah, same thing. You, you, just nothing you, happened. You take it, nothing happened. Yes, this is a civil people war die, over again. But nothing like, people died. Uh, Russia is going to lose seven thousand three hundred casualties total to Posh's two thousand. So this is oh, a, that's a different outcome than the previous previous this was pretty is, similar this is over three times the casualties that the yeah. russians suffered from from what the ottomans did this is a huge Yikes. loss to the russians um, yeah. uh, enough to but they don't give up because if 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 any country doesn't give a shit about their humans it's russia <laughs> it's russia but it's a definitely a sizable you know swing in casualties here that the rest of the world kind of takes notice like what the hell is happening yeah, well right yeah why, how did that happen why did that happen russia had you know they had so many more people and turns out uh that just gave the ottomans more people to shoot <laughs> apparently it's, it's the it's only advantage oh uh, yeah that's pretty much all the advantage was yeah now, unfortunately here, Pasha is going to fail to properly counterattack and push the Russians off, you know, out of the territory altogether, which is what he should have done. He should have got out of his redoubts and actually pushed the Russian force uh, right. while they were disheartened, while they were weakened. But he doesn't. He instead, sits back so in his uh, instead of pursuing past his redoubts, he recaptured yeah. his redoubts and said, OK, yeah, fine, we're just going to keep on holding our spot. going to wait. Uh, and he's going to wait until August 31st. Over a month later, All right, so he's been cavalry attack, uh, but uh, uh, that was after allowing the Russians to continue to build reinforcements because while he's under siege, the Russians aren't, so they can bring yeah. in reinforcements. They just keep on getting more folks willy nilly. He doesn't really have that option, so the Russians no. uh, swelled their ranks. Did the Ottomans have uh, access to McClellan's battle plans? Is that kind <laughs> of where they, they got it from? I um, think they did. Quick uh, shout to Histor- <laughs> uh, our Civil yeah, War in hindsight, Civil hindsight yeah. uh, page. If you want to learn about what a dickhead McClellan was, go check that out. Yep. Uh, for Pasha's efforts here in his cavalry attack on the 31st, he's going to lose 1,000 of his own men to 1,300 Russians. So not exactly what you want to see. If you're in a siege and you've got less men than the enemy does. Right. No, yeah, you have to keep up those, you know, you take out three times as many as they do bits. You can't You can't afford to have an a equal number of casualties. Yeah, uh, because uh, what happens is Russia calls on the Grand Duke himself, and they get another... The Grand Duke of yeah. Russia? Yeah, yeah, the Grand Duke. Yeah, Grand Duke. Nicholas, okay. he's there now with uh, with his army. Uh, and they've got you know, like 100,000 men at this point, so... What? Quite significantly more than the Ottomans do with their 20,000. S- now, you gave a spoiler away at, at the first, but that's five to one. That's yeah. I, they, they survive this? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Did Russia um, just, like, hide an embarrassment for 20 years afterward? They, they should probably, have. They probably should have. Uh, on September 3rd, Johnny, Russian forces are going to reduce a Turkish garrison that guarded the Ottoman supply lines at Lovek. Uh, and this is kind of the breaking of the back, or at least the start of the breaking of the back of Pasha's forces, because now with Lovek gone, he doesn't have a clear supply line anymore. Yeah. Eh, writing's on the wall. Eventually, if you're going to siege and you don't have supplies coming in, yeah, it's a it's a waiting game at this yeah. point. It's... He is going to recall his uh, his forces from Lovek, the ones that do survive this Russian attack, back to Plevna, increasing his army now to just over thirty thousand men. Oh well, that's way better. Now it's which is not great because <laughs> the Grand Duke at this point is going to call for aid from Romania, who's going to send More? Alexandru Cernat across the Danube with an additional forty three thousand four hundred and fourteen men. So we are. 
<laughs> way proper fucked at this point. All right, so the Ottomans, Ottomans are like, all right, hey, guys, we're fine. We're totally fine. We're going to bring in 10,000 more men, right? All right, they're not going to see that coming. Uh, and then the Russians are like, oh, well, uh, we're going to bring in 43,000 more Romanians yeah. to yeah. come and help. Yeah. With, so, and But they're going to, with the 143,000, they're not just going to, like, march all 143,000 in and just take it? Well, <laughs> you should do was, that, right? That would yeah, they right? probably should. Uh, on September 11th, never forget, uh, the combined Russian Romanian army is going to assault Plevna, and for three hours, Tsar Alexander II uh, and Grand Duke Nicholas are going to watch from a pavilion that was built just for them outside of the range of the Ottoman guns. So, <laughs> picture, picture you have. You're, 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 like, two of the <laughs> highest-ranking people in your country watching this battle. You're going to want to be on your A game, right? This is going to be, like, come, Yeah, no, come I mean, yeah, you, you've got to bring your best. Destroy the Ottoman Empire. Um, I'm just kind of picturing them sitting on, like, a water tower type uh, structure. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. drinking some beers or something watching this. I mean, like, oh, it's going to be a good one. All right, what they're gonna, let's go. Because what I, they set themselves up just to absolutely obliterate their yeah. enemy like uh, they have them outnumbered by a hundred and ten thousand folks yeah and what they're gonna see though johnny is they're gonna see for three hours the russian army and romanian army get cut to shit again for just with hours. the volley just volley after, after attack volley and just after attack is just repulsed and repulse. And How have much line ammo did the Ottomans have? They must have been up. well uh, stocked with ammunition. They planned yeah. it out at least, because uh, if this were civil war, the Confederates would have ran out of ammo. Yeah, by now. Yeah, at this point. Uh, and again, 1873 Winchesters was given all the credit, but it really is is the it's single just, shot muskets that are like proper sighted at volley range and just doing proper right. And so, volleys. and so the real story here is not that uh, this repeating uh, gun is, is the hero or anything else, or that um, maybe volley fire is to, is is a good way to go. The I think the lesson to be learned is maybe don't walk a bunch of troops shoulder to shoulder, march straight at a target. <laughs> That might, that might be that might be the one. Maybe we it's time to move beyond that. Yeah, right. Uh, at the end of the day, Johnny, all the Russians have to show for this is two redoubts that were captured by Skobolev on the southern end of the city, and one redoubt named Gravista, uh, which was captured after four failed attempts, and was only captured with the assistance of Prince Carol from Romania himself getting involved in the in the battle. And the, and by again by getting involved personally, I mean like he's probably like. A hundred way back, back giving orders, yeah. but like he's on the field, so like they give him credit. And he uh, waited until the fifth attack to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And those southern <laughs> redoubts, Johnny. Was, those... <laughs> after the fourth, it was probably like, ah, it's basically gone. Like there's yeah. three guys left, and he's like, I'll take my forty thousand men forward, and we will take over yeah. this redoubt. Uh, the, uh, the those uh, southern used... redoubts, Johnny. Those two southern redoubts, they're going to be retaken by Pasha on the twelfth. So again, after the third battle. The only things the Russians, after this whole month-long siege where you lose, like, 10,000, you, what you have to show for it is one fort basically taken around the city. And, 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 and what were the casualties on this, after this day? Did we, do you have that? So, from, from uh, July till September, Russia lost 20,000 men to only 6,000 Ottoman forces lost. So... This three times as much. Is, like, three and a half times as much. Uh, ish. Ish. Yeah, that's this is pretty bad. That's significant though. That's not a great way to uh, win wars or battles or um, uh, really, I, I just be an empire. Like if your empire or whatever is going to be that bad at empire ship, yeah. like get the hell out of here, Russia. Like uh, give give up all your empire shit and like you don't get to play this game anymore. Leave it to the Ottomans. Leave it to the British. Uh, you know, leave it to the French and Spanish. They did empires the right way. Well, you're, Johnny, you're, just, you're not you doing know, shit. Uh, after the third battle, Russian Romanian forces says, "You know what? Starving them out seems like the better ah, yeah. here, maybe, as opposed to fighting. <laughs> maybe uh, they're better than us, and we will stop just charging at them with so people. Because in, I'm guessing the the Russian troops are like, uh, are you sure you want to just keep, keep you, doing you, this? us to march again, just straight just at them up. again? <laughs> Did you, have, you haven't seen what's happening." So they're uh, so Johnny, they're gonna bring in siege specialist General Edward oh. Ivanovic 
Tolopin, uh, Totobin, uh, to encircle the city, and by the 24th of October, Plevna is completely and totally surrounded and cut off of all supplies. That, it seems like maybe you don't need a siege specialist to do that, but that's nice that that job exists and positions available to somebody. Yep. Uh, but isn't a siege really just any road that goes into the city? Just cut you it off. take it, you put yeah. some troops well. there, and you rock it any truck that tries to come through. <laughs> By the 24th of October, like I said, the city's completely surrounded, and it holds out till the 9th of December when Ottoman forces realize that they're proper fucked and they gotta get I, out if they want to try to survive yeah so pasha is going to lead a midnight raid kind of a daring midnight raid he's going to throw bridges over the vit river at the dead of night where he's able to actually break through the first line of russian trenches but now, when you're out on, I, i'm sorry you 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 just glossed past throw bridges over a river Real yeah, like, quick, like, like that's just like no problem and an easy thing to do. Like they they pulled it out of their backpack and went whoop. This is the 1870s or whatever the hell. Like they had to pontoons. build some freaking pontoons. bridges across a river in the middle of the night, Tommy. Yep. Uh, and they're gonna break through the Russians' first line of defenses and get involved in hand to hand combat. Hand to hand combat. Oh shit! And when it's hand to hand combat and you're outnumbered five to one, that's hard. That's tricky. Yeah. Not. Nah. Um, I don't think it's going to go over very, very well. This actually leads to Pasha himself being wounded, uh, and panic in his lines ensues because the report is that Pasha is dead. And, uh, yeah. and when you're outnumbered five to one, uh, the uh, retreat back to the city gets given, and everybody right. you know, hightails it back. As, to and and you say to hand-to-hand hand combat, but it's not actually. It's it's bayonet, it's knife, it's... Uh, yeah, that's hand-to-hand. Hand. I mean, well, right, but when you say hand-to-hand, hand, people often think, like, just we're just punching people. Oh, no, everything. I mean, like, like bayonet. No, this yeah, is that's... not... They're just not firing their weapons, and instead they're sticking their bayonet into one guy and then getting wrecked by four. Yes. Because yeah. <laughs> like, your bayonet gets stuck and you can't get it out fast enough. Yeah, uh, the this is a very lopsided loss here for the Ottomans, as they're going to lose five thousand men to only two thousand on the Russian side. So yeah, that what so okay, so they they the idea was they cross the river, they get the attack a spot and create an yeah. opening to Hold either to just, escape just to leave, run or yeah, they were, they, this was abandoned. Yeah. This was okay. abandoned the city. Get the hell out of Dodge. And instead, to... they ran into a tr- some trenches and stabbed some folks, and then most of them died. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next day, a wounded Pasha is going to surrender the city to Russian Romanian forces, and the casualty report, Johnny, casualty report oh, yeah. for this entire wait, you, siege. Wait, you said the Ottoman Empire didn't die after this, yeah, but he, he no, surrendered don't. the city? Uh, yes. That, so, yeah, but, casu- okay, all right. Let me get it. Let me get it. Casualty get it. report. Casualty Let's report, Johnny. All right. Of the total 130,000 combined Russian Romanian forces, they would lose 50,000 killed, wounded, or missing. Oh, wow. A that- A third? Hurts. That's significant. To take over a city. To take over a city. Uh, the Ottoman forces are going to lose 25,000 killed or wounded, and 43,340 are going to surrender at the city. Uh, and we All right, so, that's, so their total was, what, 28,000? Uh, I'm sorry, 68,000, something like that? Yeah, if, yeah, with counting the, the surrender. Because all the surrenders are just the, that's entire, the rest of the Pasha's, army that was yeah, there. Pasha's entire command is gone. I mean, yeah, there's yeah, an yeah. entire right. Ottoman army that's gone. So, I mean, casualty-wise... Right, so they had, uh, they it, they technically had it just lose, over two times, right? Yeah, Russia, technically Russian speaking, to... if you look at the total casualties, you know, including the surrendered, mm-hmm. the Ottomans lose more men well, than the Russians. But if you look well, at just, just raw about... casualties, like dead and wounded, yeah, it, the Russians lose double. Right, and I was just talking about troops involved. It was 60-ish, 68 to 130. Yes, yeah. Whatever, yeah, so yeah. basically... Two to one, and but then the casualties were yeah. flipped, flipped the other way. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. So our aftermath report, Johnny, here. According to British diplomat A.J.P. Taylor, and I quote here, most battles confirm the way things are going already. Plevna is one of the few engagements which changed the course of history. It is difficult to see how the Ottoman Empire could have survived in Europe if the Russians had reached Constantinople in July. Probably it would have collapsed in Asia as well. Plevna gave the Ottoman Empire another 40 years of life. So what he's saying here is that this battle was so significant in how it delayed the Russians that it allowed them to, A, never reach Constantinople, and allowed the Ottoman Empire to not fold and die, but live for another 40 years until after World War One was over. Right. So, but so after this, after the Battle of Plovdiv, did the Russians just like, okay, this is we've 
pretty yeah this is pretty too much, much. This, we're obviously yeah. if we can't just walk into puebla and take it over we don't stand a chance in constantinople is that kind so of the, the, uh, the so mentality basically what happens or? the war continues a little bit but russian and ottoman forces come to an agreement they come to a peace accord yeah they're like uh, let's maybe says, stop hey, killing twice as many as our men as we kill yours yeah uh, basically what happens is and they're uh, like is, stop invading us yeah Easy Basically, enough. The, <laughs> the Ottoman Empire seizes what is now Bulgaria, uh, and you know Bulgaria is like, "Yay, we're free from the Ottoman!" Oh, now it's Russian control. Okay, cool. Oh That's well, hell. Better. <laughs> well, no, <nope. laughs> it's not. And it gives the Ottoman Empire enough uh, enough freedom and liberties as they still exist to um, take out their vengeance on parts of their empire that they deemed too sympathetic to the Russians. Including one of many Armenian mm. genocides where they just oh, shit. go off you know, and murder a bunch of know, people because they were a little bit too happy that the Russians were gone. Ah, oh, damn it. See, I didn't, I didn't realize that the Armenian genocide was tied to the Ottoman Empire because what, I don't yeah, know history. And I was really, really... you The way you set this episode up, Tommy, boy, oh boy, was I hoping that the Ottoman Empire would come through strong and I was rooting for them. <laughs> yeah, and, you know... And they were the utter dog, and uh, but turns out they're just another mass Dickish empire, shitty empire. That yeah, uh, god damn it. Yeah, yeah. They did. Well, they came through because it cost a shit ton of Russian casualties, but uh, you know. And what it also does is it changes firearms across Europe, Johnny, as as pretty much the entire uh, European continent looks to repeating arms, magazine-fed guns specifically to to change their empire. I mean, you have. You have uh, you know, all your single-shot guns that start to go like, hey, eh, maybe we don't want this. Maybe we yeah. want something to replace it that has a magazine of some types, including the Russian Empire themselves, which at the time of the battle, they were, uh, they were trying to replace their standard Krinka arms with a single-shot Berdan rifle, which was uh, a little bit better. Like a Krinka is kind of like a muzzleloader that's converted into uh, a, a single-shot okay. breech loader. They were looking for a developed just built to feature. do the thing yeah. not adapted yeah. to do the thing and uh the Bredan rifle gets very short-lived because it, it they're like uh we need something better than this and it starts them down the path of the commission built mosin de gaunt which was just oh that's a popular old gun i know i've heard of it um but yeah, it's, it's a piece popular of crap, right? because it was cheap in the united states to buy it was not the best Good. example of a firearm that you really now, want to... <laughs> now, I know you said that, like, the repeating guns and, and everything, like, uh, they got all the credit for winning the battle, and that's where people ended up going because of this, and even though they didn't win this at all. Um, but these are precursors for essentially everything that they ended up using with the fully automatic or the, the kind of M15, whatever, all the different. Yeah. And, and what we have today, essentially. And so yeah, it, it was going that developed. way regardless of Eventually, whether or not yes. it got the credit here. Yeah. What you do get in this time frame after, after this battle is you do get this odd area where the United States doesn't get involved in this because we're too poor to put money into guns at this point. Because we just broke ourselves over having over a civil, civil war. war for five But the rest years. of Europe is like every new technology that gets developed, they're like, we've got to try it. So you go from uh, black powder muzzle loaders to uh, this weird area where you have these hybrid uh, uh, breech loaders that are made out of these guns. So you've got like this the trapdoor Springfield is what the Americans did. But we kept that until we transitioned to like the modern era of guns. Yeah. Europe went, oh, we've got this you know, trapdoor or the Snyder conversion for the English that they used. Uh, and then they're like, we don't like that. We want a dedicated gun. And so then they buy a dedicated gun. They're like, no, we need a two magazine fed gun. And so, right. get so they that. were all, and then they're like, oh wait, we need smokeless powder. Cause the French had the smokeless powder. And we need that adapted yeah. as quickly as we can. And so they just did the early adapter thing where they're like, oh, you added one new thing to your product. Yes. I need it now. Yes. All, yeah, my old product that. is at obsolete. And where America's like, well, we can't afford your new product, so we'll wait till you get it sorted out, Pretty and much. then we'll get our new product once we can afford well, it. And then, except for that fact that we went with the, you know, Crag Jorgensen rifle, which wasn't a great design. We had that for like three years, and we're like, no, this no, is no. shit! New gun! 
Yeah, I don't. I, I no, I don't know anything about that. Uh, well, uh, that's about it. Well, that's hey. That now you know uh, how the Ottoman Empire kicked the shit out of the Russians. Uh, I mean, they lost the war, they lost the battle, but they caused enough casualties that the Russians were like, maybe we don't want a total yeah. invasion here. So hey, now you know why we think that magazine guns were better. That's it for this week in Historic Hindsight. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review, and join us next week when we talk about a dirty Confederate spy.